what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Scents of South Jersey with me, Kellen, for another fragrance video. So today we're gonna do the second episode of my series, Then and Now. In the series, Then and Now, I take a look at two versions of one fragrance, the vintage formulation and the current formulation. I'm gonna treat it like a normal review. You know, we'll go over the presentation differences. I'll briefly touch on the notes, although that's not as important when you're doing these Then and Now videos. Uh, I'll talk about its performance, both uh, vintage and current, based on my experience wearing the fragrance. And then I'll talk about my overall thoughts and then we'll answer the question, is the vintage version worth it? So today's fragrance is a 1973 classic, arguably one of the greatest barbershop aromatic fougere fragrances ever from the house of Paco Rabanne. It is Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. So we have a vintage bottle here and we have a current formulation bottle here. Look at that, I'm almost done with this one. So we'll break down the fragrance as I just stated. Before we get started though, I do wanna mention again, if you enjoy classic men's fragrance content, please subscribe to the channel to support the channel. And if you have an Instagram, go ahead and check out the Scents of South Jersey Instagram page for photos of fragrances for my collection. And I do scent of the day posts daily on my story. And of course, anything else, you know, news and updates regarding the channel can be found on that. So let's take a look at Pac Bon Poro. Starting things off with the presentation, let's take a look at the vintage bottle first. One thing I do wanna say is I wanna thank McBag. He was very kind and sent me this bottle to 50 ml splash, complimentary. He wanted me to have it and I was talking to him about uh, you know vintage again, get all your vintage samples from McBag. Thank you so much for sending this to me, man. I really appreciate it. I've been obviously enjoying it all week. I'm like halfway through the bottle. So let's take a look at the bottle here. This is a splash. You got the big PR logo there, Paco Rabanne, 50 ml. Um, the cap comes off. You got the black dapper there as well. And pretty simplistic bottle. The classic kind of darker green, woodsier oak moss style bottle color. That's what uh, the oak moss, the note, the color of moss, the dark kind of like forest green really comes to my mind when you look at this bottle, as opposed to the newer version here. Still green, but a little bit lighter, a little bit more, you know, up to date. Let's put it that way. It doesn't have like this looks like a classic vintage feel. Looks like the 70s. Sort of reminds me of that like wood paneling wall that you see in all those old 70s and 80s pictures. This one is obviously more up to date and the sprayer is built in. However, they do make splashes of this bottle. I don't have the boxes for either one of these. Um, this came unboxed and the one I had for this one I gave away. But if you go online, you can see the difference in the box. But obviously the bottle's most important. So let's take a look at them both again here. Vintage and then the current. The back, nothing there too. So you got a sticker here and everything is embossed there. This says Paris, Rabanne, Parfum, or excuse me, Paco Rabanne and then Parfums. So nothing much on there, but some brand information. Since we're talking about the fragrance, I'll go ahead and reissue the list of notes. This one uh, surprisingly doesn't have nearly as many notes as many of the fragrances of the era. You know how I've mentioned all the time that fragrances from the 70s and 80s, they have a ton of notes, like it's a real long list. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme really doesn't have that many. In the top, you have Rosemary, Clary, Sage, and Brazilian Rosewood. And then in the harder middle of the fragrance, you have Lavender, Geranium, and Tonka Bean. And in the base, you have Oak Moss, Honey, Musk, and Amber, and that's it. And those notes, they're not that you know vast, but they make up one of the most beautiful fragrances ever, most classic men's barbershop style. So that's good to know, um, but let's check out the next step. Okay, so performance. Comparing the performance from the vintage versus the current. Paco Rabanne Poron has never really been, at least with me, never really been a beast mode performer. I think average you're getting between six to seven hours max. Um, I noticed the vintage projects stronger in the beginning, like when I first put it on and I have the vintage on this hand and I have the current formulation on this hand. So um, after that, the once it's projecting, like I noticed it's really strong, I can really smell it for two hours where this one is not as strong of a projector. Um, this one does last longer. This one probably will get you through a full work day, but barely, you know, it's a very skin scent at the end of the day. This one, I think it really caps out at the six hour range. Um, I, I looked at my old review to see what I thought back then when I was heavily wearing this one and I, I, it really was consistent. Um, so, you know, they both really, we can say are pretty much the same with, with the performance. There's not a vast difference between the two. All right, so, you know, Overall thoughts on Paco Rabanne Porum Vintage versus the current formulation. Finally getting a chance to actually wear the vintage consistently. I've been wearing it all week. If you follow the Instagram page, it's pretty much been Paco Rabanne Porum week. I've been storing this one every day. So I had a vintage bottle before, but most of the notes were spoiled. And honestly, I should just throw it away because it's useless. This one, thankfully, was probably, you know, 90% perfect. The initial top notes kind of give off that like spoiled sense, but that is only seconds. And then the dry down, it really comes alive. And, and I must say, it's absolutely wonderful. It's an awesome fragrance to, to be able to experience 
experience. Um, and I would have never noticed the differences had I had not tried this one because with this, um, similar to the current formulation of Corum, there's a sort of a sweetness in the opening. So I'll spray one spray on here. Um, it still has that sharp herbal, like rosemary um, hint to it, but this one is just so much darker and so much more, I'm gonna you know rub some on here, so much more deep because it has that real oak moss. So I'll give that a second to, to wear off. Um, however, you know, the dry down for both of them still has that beautiful soapy, masculine barbershop fougere vibe to them. So there's not that much difference in the dry down, but really the opening with this one gives it the real sharp, strong green. And this one is sharp as well too, but I would have never noticed that there is a sweetness had I had not tried this one. So um, they're both very masculine and they, and they both, I would say, like I mentioned, the performance lasts around the same amount of time. Um, this one though is just deeper and it has that real oak moss. And once you try the vintage, you can sort of pick up some of the, uh, I hate to say it, but synthetic nuances of this, but that's just the way it is. Thankfully, again, it's still being made and it's not discontinued. And yeah, okay, so the, the, the spoiled top notes now are on this one, that, that sort of off-putting scent is already gone. And it's, it's just, this is the real deal, Paco Rabanne, poor own. Like the soapiness, the greenness um, that this one has is just enhanced, turned up a notch, lit like a burner flame underneath it to really bring it to life. And it's an awesome experience. I think that it, it's something that if you are a huge Paco Rabanne lover and this, you grew up with this one, you would really notice it right away. Whereas I only ever tried this one and now getting to have a, a vintage that isn't spoiled is, is is a completely different experience in terms with the uh, the, the feeling of the green oak moss with this fragrance. Um, some of the other products that you can have, like I shaved today, this is my scent of the day and shave of the day. The aftershave, I think is actually a good fit right in between these two, the, the current and the um, and the vintage. This one definitely uh, has a, a sharp greenness to it. I do have these other vintage um, aftershave balm and shower gel here. Um, they're very small, so I use them sparingly, but they definitely, the shower gel especially, smells a lot like the vintage um, fragrance too. Um, and they do make a deodorant and a deodorant spray. So these are of the current formulation, but they pair perfectly with the vintage as well. Don't worry about that so much. So um, again, those are really the big differences that I pick up between the current formulation and the vintage. Okay, guys, the overall question, is tracking down a bottle of vintage Paco Rabanne worth it? So obviously, you know, there are ways to answer this question saying it depends. If you grew up with vintage Paco Rabanne and you have to have it, then, then yes, it's worth it. If you didn't, I would say overall, not necessarily. I think this one is um, perfect. Number one, still being made. I'd like to point that out. It's not discontinued. Number two, it is um, a modern take on the vintage as much, but they try to bring it as close to the vintage as they possibly can. And I've always enjoyed this one. I mean, look, I'm, I'm coming to the end of the bottle. Anytime I do that, it's like a monumental achievement for me now because I have so many fragrances. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I really think that this one is perfect too. So especially if you're just getting into classics, don't worry about getting a vintage one. Just wear this one, enjoy this one. And then if you think, you know what, I really wanna dive in and try to find a bottle that's A, in good condition and B, a good price, then you get the vintage. I'm enjoying it, I, I'm a collector and I love to do these reviews and wanna bring this information to you guys and love interacting with all of you in terms of you know what's better. However, I just think this one is just fine. I'm actually really happy to have this though and it's nice to be able to experience it and it's in good condition. But you know, when it comes to the dry down, they're, they're pretty close. Uh, it's really the opening and maybe heart of the fragrance really where the oak moss and, and the greenness is, is gonna be you know, um, a big difference from, from the vintage to the um, current formulation. However, what is gonna be on you the most, the dry down, I don't think is that much different. I think this is still worth it. And this isn't a necessarily cheap fragrance. I remember the first time I ever smelled this, it was in a Blue Mercury store. I sprayed it and I was like, wow, I had to have it. It was like $75 there for 100 ml because Blue Mercury is like really overpriced. Um, and I went online and ordered it that day and I've enjoyed it ever since. So I think the uh, current formulation is perfectly fine for Paco Rabanne Purim. I love it. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for this episode of Then and Now. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, vintage versus the current formulation. I wanna hear from you guys. Do you guys own the vintage? Do you own the current formulation? Do you own both? What are your preferences? Do you like having the vintage? Um, do you guys like this uh, series of videos? This is my second one. I'm really enjoying it. If you do, I'm gonna keep making them. I have some other uh, comparisons that I have already lined up that I wanna do in the future. Uh, again, I love all of the inter interaction with you guys in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are on the video, vintage versus current. Which one do you prefer? Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.